Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we'll be doing a script painting on a small piece of acrylic paper. Uh, the paper is just Strathmore acrylic paper, so it's actually for acrylic, uh, which is great because I've been using watercolor paper lately. But anyway, we're going to do a script painting. We're going to be using these colors here. Uh, this is... Uh, raw sienna and then we got cadmium red and then burnt umber i think the burnt umber actually might be pretty close to being out um so what i really want to do with this one is is really kind of a dark darker painting um but you know kind of like a coffee or like a more aggressive uh color like it would fit in with like a like couch like in a living room with like red walls and like a light or dark uh, a couch set or something like that. I just I've seen that color scheme and I kind of wanted to do it So we're gonna do it today now unlike some of the other paintings. I've done recently um, I'm actually going to paint the background um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the raw sienna to color the background so that um, It will actually kind of show up on the uh, It'll actually show up through the painting instead of doing like a white background like I've kind of been doing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, fill in this background here. I'll give it a little more paint. I didn't wanna use too much, but I may have to use more than I thought. So we'll, I'm using just a foam brush, uh, a little easier, just cause it's so wide, I can kind of uh, spread it out. However, the, the foam brushes are kind of a pain to paint with only because they like to absorb the paint, believe it or not. So we'll just do some nice even strokes to really fill in this background. And because we're going to be scraping this direction, that's kind of usually how I do it. Um, we're going to really just, we're gonna paint in that direction as well so that it kind of looks like uh, it was part of the scrape because it's already following the direction uh, that the other colors will go. All right, so we've got that good good and good now I thought about using red um, black and white in this scrape painting today however I don't know if I'm going to use uh, black and white and I apologize it's probably a little loud outside sounds like uh, someone just came home this is normally why I don't like recording boys because it's very noisy outside but anyway we're gonna we're gonna fight through it so I don't know if I'm gonna use black and white I might just because it, it'll probably give it a little bit of balance. We'll kind of see how it goes. So I'm gonna be using a smaller drywall scraper today, or yeah, I believe that's what it is, a drywall scraper, and then these other colors. But give me one second, I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some gloves, just because it makes, uh, makes it easier at the end, you know? I don't have to wash my hands in blazing hot water to get the paint off. And so we're going to put those on and then we will go ahead and paint. Um, I've got the paper just actually taped to the back of another paper uh, of a painting that I didn't like that I did. So that's, uh, you'll notice it's just a paper taped to paper. All right, so here we go. Now we've got our, our colored background. We're good there. I'm going to go ahead and use this, uh, this burn dumper here. layer eh, what well, looks kind of weird I'm not gonna lie coming out but we'll go ahead and make our line of paint here now I do want to caution you because I didn't know that the paint had kind of dried this much but again since I live in Arizona it dries the paint out pretty badly and I don't know if you can see it I'm gonna go ahead and just show you real fast yeah the paint looks kind of weird yeah, I, I know what it looks like, okay? I already know, you don't have to tell me. But one thing I wanna show you is just this right here, that it's kinda of dried out. Look, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I already know <laughs> what that brown paint looks like. We're not gonna talk about that. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna try to work with it. If we have to throw the painting away, that's fine. We'll, we'll kinda just throw it away if we have to, but we're gonna work with it and see if, if it's still usable. But again, this is the problem of, of keeping the paints in the garage that because it's so hot here, it tends to break the paints down. 
they not only dry out, but before they dry out, what'll happen is the binder that's in the paint that, that kind of keeps the pigment and the other parts of the paint together, it starts to break apart. And so that's what the chunks are. So we're gonna we're gonna try to use it. If we can't use it, then we can't and I'll just we'll just, you know, we'll kinda work with it and we'll just count it as a loss. It happens. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and yeah you can already tell that it's super thick um, it doesn't really want to spread and and you can see like how it just did this little like thing where it it pulled back after I pulled it forward that's because the binder is starting to really um, well it's starting to bind up so it's starting to get really thick um, and kind of chunky because it's lost, it's losing the elasticity of being wet. So this is kind of a cautionary tale of what happens if you let your, if you leave your paints in the garage too long. Now I, ha I hadn't used acrylics in a long time, so these paints are, not only is it dry out here, but the paints have probably been out here maybe a year or two, probably without being used because I was using only gloss enamel for such a long time that the paints have not only just you know been out here for a, a few months they've probably been out here like a year or so in the heat and and stuff like that so they just kind of broken apart but we're gonna we're gonna fight through it we're just gonna use them um if we can't sell the piece oh well we'll just we'll kind of work with it we'll see if we can make it any better um and we'll just do what we can we'll do what we can here all right so we're gonna go ahead and throw on the red we're gonna see what happens how it looks um i, I may end up using the black and white just because um, I don't know if it's enough, right? I don't know if, because that brown is kind of already messed up. Yeah, you can see that the red is just overtaking it. Um, so that brown is actually not going to really pull through because, because the brown is one, it's drying as we speak, but two, because there wasn't really much elasticity to it, it's not going to really mix with this red. So because of that, it's not going to give it any of the characteristics. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to use this, um, this white and the black. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that we're going to use the black and the white. But what, I, what, I, what I'll probably do, just to kind of give it some real uh, pop, is I think what I'll probably do is I'm going to run all these colors but we're just gonna run them all together. So even though we have that kind of the raw sienna on the background, let's go ahead and just throw it on here with these other colors and we'll just kind of pull them all together super slowly and we'll just see what happens. I mean, why not? Painting can't get any worse. So let's just go ahead and do it and we'll, we'll find out together. So we're just gonna, we're really gonna push down on these colors we're gonna apply a lot of pressure to the back um, just because we really want these colors to to kind of pull through and I, I'm actually gonna lighten up a little bit and pull through so okay well you can't see the black and white because I pushed too too heavily so I'm going to actually use a lighter pull on this one and again you see more of the of the raw sienna which is weird because the black and white are in front of it, but I, I'm guessing what's happening is because I'm pulling it over the black and white, it's probably uh, overshadowing them. So we'll go ahead and just pull this through. People always gotta drive faster here, I don't know why. We'll just pull that through. And I think honestly, uh, because you can't see, that I'm gonna pull that over just to kind of tie it in and I'm actually gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it right there um, because I don't think that this painting is good enough to sell or anything but the colors are kind of cool I really do kind of like how uh, like how much movement there is in this in this piece even though I'm not really happy with how the paint itself turned out uh, I do think that the like the colors themselves are pretty cool and let me see if I can get this paint off the tape is ripping the paper again I've, I've cautioned not using masking tape even though I'm using masking tape this is why I tell you not to use it because it wants you see how it's ripping the paper right here 
yeah, that's that's the problem with using the masking tape. However, I'm I kind of don't really care too much because having that dark brown, um, you know, with the binder not really sticking is kind of kind of messing it up anyway. So I don't think that this painting is actually a keeper anyway. So it's it's really not that big a deal. But we'll just still try to keep it as clean as possible. And we'll see how it looks afterwards. Ah, the masking tape is so sticky. It wants to stick to everything. Get off of there. Come on. All right. And we'll just pull this bad boy off. Stay right there, you. Okay. All right. So, get these gloves off and take a look. So, actually, if I flip it over, I kind of like the way that it looks this way. Um, I'm going to pull this down kind of away from the light and uh, I'll show it to you guys so you can see it. Okay, let me zoom out real quick. There we go. And I'm going to kind of show it to you at an angle just because um, the light I know isn't always that great so this is the final piece oh, here I'll block that nope not helping not I don't think that's helping all right so let's take a look here so this is the final piece it's got some nice uh, it's got some nice arcs in it I kind of do, I do like the combination of colors. I really wish that the dark brown was pulled through. Overall, I, I wouldn't, uh, I probably wouldn't sell this piece or anything. I don't even know if I'd keep it. I like the color combination. I think if it had pulled the white and the black a little more, see there's too much like raw sienna here for me and kind of overall, I don't mind the color, but I, I wish it had a little bit more kind of arcs. Um, and I think I can actually fix that with the next painting I do. What I think I'll do next painting is we'll do a background and then we'll probably do sections of the paint and then pull all of the paint at once in those sections. So maybe like one color all the way down, but then do different little sections of color and we'll try that and we'll see how that turns out. So we'll probably do that on the next one. Uh, so if I don't do it in my next one, because I forget, remind me and uh, I'll do that. And the next one but you know overall this 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 happens sometimes when you make your paintings they just don't turn out the way you hoped and you just gotta chalk it up to loss and move on but anyways that's it guys i'll catch you in another one take care guys bye hey cody here thanks again for watching this video if you liked it please consider leaving a comment a like or sharing the video with someone else and also if you did like this video and you want to see more videos in the future consider subscribing or turning on notifications Lastly, if you like the painting that you saw in this video or any of the videos you've seen, many of them are for sale and you can see what available paintings um, are available for purchase by visiting my website, CodySchwabi.com. There is a link in the description below. That is all. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. Bye.